Hello, my name is Jacqueline Boydum, and I'm going to be talking to you about the chemical revolution. The chemical revolution is a time in the late 18th century when chemists began to embrace new methodology in their laboratories and to focus more on quantitative measurement and um, a more rational nomenclature. Two leading figures that I, talked, that I will talk about in um, the chemical revolution were particularly important in the discovery of oxygen. The first is Joseph Priestley, who we have a statue of here, was a uh, British theologian and natural philosopher who um, used a device known as a pneumatic trough, which he used to isolate separate gases. Um, Priestley burned mercuric oxide, which we have a sample of, with a burning glass in his pneumatic trough. And um, when he isolated the oxygen, was excited to find that it played an important role in respiration and in combustion. Priestley, however, subscribed to an older theory known as phlogiston and didn't exactly understand uh, the role that oxygen played in chemistry in the way that we understand it today. Um, phlogiston theory suggested that substances have within them something called phlogiston that was released into the surrounding atmosphere as it burned. And Priestley thought that an air that was totally devoid of phlogiston, that was supportive of combustion, such as oxygen, could be designated dephlogisticated air. Um, Priestley replicated his experiment isolating dephlogisticated air for a French chemist named Antoine Lavoisier. Antoine Lavoisier was more interested in quantitative measurement than Joseph Priestley had been, and his analysis led him to believe that phlogiston wasn't the best theory for explaining um, the role that this new gas played in combustion. Antoine Lavoisier renamed the gas oxygen and began leading or began conducting other experiments um, on gases and renaming them as well. The nature of gases was also becoming um, more interesting to the public at large with the development of hot air ballooning, which was a spectacle and a very exciting sport at the end of the 18th century. So despite the public and scientific benefits that the study of gases had brought, um, the gentlemen involved in this research were politically attacked. Um, Joseph Priestley, who was a Unitarian and a supporter of the French Revolution, um, was criticized very broadly in England, his home. His laboratory was burned by a mob um, who feared his uh, revolutionary mentality. So he fled to the United States where he could celebrate democracy more openly. We do have a political cartoon of him here with uh, Thomas Paine, the author of Common Sense, and they're both sitting amongst their respective scientific and political literature. Um, there are a lot of firearms and explosives in between them, and I think the artist is commenting that um, both science and politics can be incendiary and volatile matters. Yeah. Antoine Lavoisier worked as a tax farmer um, because he didn't make a living as a chemist. Um, Tax farming wasn't a popular profession to hold during the French Revolution, so he unfortunately met his end at the guillotine. And that's another example of the way that chemistry and politics were tumultuous during this revolutionary era.